Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another video here in the Emacs text editor. So today I just wanted to talk pretty briefly to give an introduction to writing in org mode. Now, in the Emacs text editor, or in really any text editor, you can you can write in any way you like. That's the fun part of writing in plain text. That's one of the powerful things about it. And of course, uh, version control and other things that plain text is um, is conveniently known for and of course exporting to multiple different types of documents if you have different deliverables for different projects or you want to really customize how you're writing uh, so for example even if you're writing for something like wordpress or substack or even um you know github you, the the org markdown is uh, is works in github and i think in gitlab as well um, but in almost any place where your writing is going to need to be submitted um, even in a, a PDF document or a, a Microsoft Word document um, or an open office document, you can you can export to these different formats. And org mode actually makes it really easy to export to those formats because it has a built-in exporter. So that's another benefit of org mode. But basically, uh, I'll jump right in here with a, a very a very typical use case, I guess, these days, let's say writing for the web, right? So it, whether you're writing for for WordPress, or something like Substack or, or one of those, uh, medium.com. There's lots of different places where your writing may end up on the web and be read by people. So a few things here. When you're starting an org mode document, of course, you use the, the your, your hash mark here and a plus sign, and you can put in something like title. You don't have to capitalize it. I typically do. And you can put in, you know, a new document and though it might not be used in every export it could be you know convenient for you to put in your you know your, your author name you know so i'll just put in my name here and then you also can put in different options uh so for example an org mode document comes with a default table of contents and you can ignore that if you want you can put you know toc for table of contents and put nil um, there's, there's different options that I use. One is like, for example, the, the inclusion of smart quotes. I believe you just, you just do a single quote and you can put T for true, you know, like I, I want the, the export to use smart quotes. That's when the left and the right quote are, are different. You know, they're, they're in the, in a proper style for like a print document, not as important in, in plain text, of course. And um, another one that's that's interesting is supers. So when you, you know, let's say you write something like, uh, you know, public underscore HTML. When you export this, it will it will use this underscore to to treat um, HTML or whatever follows it as like a subscript. So it'll be shrunken down in in like an HTML export. So to stop it from doing that, you can do I believe this. Up uh, carrot here and, and put nil. You can double check all of these in the work of a documentation. I'm just giving you some examples of how you can you can use different options. And then one of the most important things is using these these uh, little asterisks here to to create headings. So for example, one well we I guess they call them stars as well in org mode. So let's just say stars. So this will be a heading level one. Now. Uh, this can be a little confusing if uh, you know you're writing a document you may know if you're writing a document for the web SEO is a big concern so you'll want to put say your one of your main search queries in some cases not in all cases you might want to put like a search query like uh, if you're writing a document about uh, you know a, a recipe for for clam chowder you know you might put you know your little intro here you know this is a great recipe and then, um, you know, but you might do, you know, for one of the headings, you know, finally, when you get down to the recipe, you know, my ultimate clam chowder recipe. So even though these are level ones, when you export this to HTML, they will be technically exported as an H2, a heading level two, which is exactly what you want. So that's a good thing to know as well. And, uh, you know, your H1 would be your title. But uh, you can also um, you can exclude the title from from a from an export, which can be convenient uh, for all different reasons. So uh, so basically, yes, you have different headings here. 
um, you know, your intro. So this is a, whoops, this is a, a great recipe. No, I like it. Ultimate clam chowder recipe. Here's my recipe. And of course, uh, org mode gives you the option for, for organized lists. So even in Markdown and other uh, syntaxes, restructured text and other things you might use, you might have, you know, your, your ordered lists. So here you, you know, you denote these with, um, you know, actual numbers. And that's how you know you're, you're in a list. But you don't even actually have to do that. You can just start with a dash and say, you know, um, uh, cook uh, onions, you know, uh, add uh, parsley, um, ladle over rice, uh, you know, whatever it might be. You can actually have have the um you can actually hit shift and then a, a right arrow or left arrow and you can just move over to the numbers here so it actually you know it doesn't matter in, in what order you do these you can get like different uh different display options here uh these will export as bullets the numbers of course will export as numbers so in html language that would be ordered lists versus unordered lists so this isn't these are both unordered lists these will both be ordered lists you can choose whichever one you want for your plain text document here. Uh, it won't matter in the in the final export. And the other cool thing you can do here, which you can't do in in Markdown in other languages, as far as I know, you know, maybe depending on the text editor, you can hold down your Alt key and uh, or in Emacs, you know, Meta, and you can move these things up and down uh, without changing, you know, the, the numeric order. And you can do the same thing for headings, you know. So you can you can use the the alt key to move things around. And another thing I like is, so let's say, let's say you're just writing uh, a general purpose essay, you know, that's, let's say, let's see a, a news item or something that it doesn't really need to be SEO friendly. Um, let's just say maybe an essay for school or something. And you want to, you want to organize it in org mode, of course, and then export it without all the headings and things. Well, actually, let me show you. So for example, here, you can do Ctrl-C, Ctrl-E, and this is the, the export uh, dispatcher. So you have different different exports that are loaded by default. There, there's ones that you can add to this list. Um, so you know you can see here, open office documents, plain text, LaTeX, uh, iCalendar, which is interesting, and HTML. And you notice you have different options here. You see you've got body only, uh, export scope, visible only. So if there's, um, you can make certain parts of your document visible and invisible, uh, uh, different different things here. Uh, what, what we're gonna do here for this example is body only. So that would be control and the letter B. So now body only is on. So when I do H for HTML and then the the O button for HTML and open. Uh, so let me actually show you what I did there. One second. I'm going to have to turn this off here. Hello. Surprise, surprise. Here we go. So this will be the whole screen. So now what you see here is I've actually exported my my HTML document from org mode, and this is the this is the layout that I told you about. So you have your your H two headings here, and you have your ordered list and your paragraphs. Now let me go back one second to to org mode. So you can actually now let me do it without the body, so you see what that looks like as well. What happened? So um, when you include the body, you get, uh, so this is, um, you get some different styling here as well, but this would be the title and, um, you know, we put in author. So this would be like a footer. This is your HTML footer down here and, and your heading up here. And you can see it, it imports a lot of extra stuff. If we look at the page source, you see, so it includes a lot of CSS and um, here's your actual document here. You've got, you know, your post amble. It's got a lot of extra CSS classes and things that you can you can customize, you know, yada yada yada. That's all stuff that's helpful if you're you can actually like my website. It exports from org mode as well, um, but 
uh, that's that's a different story. So uh, basically, all I wanted to show you there was what the what the default looks like. I've got a lot of windows open, but um, so you can actually you can actually customize how much you know how much you actually want to export. So so now that I've shown you that, oh, another option here. If you don't want the numbers in your headings, that's what I wanted to show you because you, you'll see here in your heading document you have these these numbered chapters here. And if we actually get rid of the, the table of contents uh, part, uh, you'll see here now when we when we export it, you also have the um, the table of contents as well, um, and you don't have numbers in the in the headings. So that's just a, a bit of um, a bit of extra styling. And what you can also do is let's just say you wanted to put your 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 table of contents after the introduction, uh, so you can you can exclude it as an option. But then include it manually with with this. It's it's the um, hash plus toc and then colon headlines one. That would be include level ones, but you could also do include level twos. You know whatever you want. So when you export that, you can move our table of contents down here. And if you don't do that, it'll you know if you don't just exclude it with the option, it'll put it you know in both places at the top and where you put it here. Uh, so the other thing um, I wanted to show you, this is a, a little more advanced um, and you need to do, um, you'll need to watch my, my org contrib's installation video, but, but long story short. So what I was saying was if you're, if you're writing an essay and you don't want those headings to show up, if you don't want these, if you just want your content, your, your written content, like your, your paragraphs, but you don't want your headings. So when you're writing like a general purpose essay about an event or, or a, a topic, what are you doing? Like one of the great ways to, to, to prep your essay to make sure you have all the information is there is to ask the five questions, right? So there's something like, uh, you know, who, what, where, how, why. So yeah, that, that's about five questions and, and you, can, you can vary these up in different ways, but these are, these are the basics, you know? And you can put them in in you know whatever direction you want. So if you're doing an essay about an event, let's say you might want to start with uh, with what. So let's say you know, uh, not tomorrow. Let's say yesterday, you know, downtown was packed, you know, for the uh, crazy turkey parade. That's that's answering the what part of it, right? You know, yesterday, you know, downtown was packed with the you know the turkey parade going on. Uh, who? So good question. Like, who's involved? What's going on? You know, the uh, the regional turkey lovers uh, association puts on this event every year. They think it's a great way to celebrate turkeys. Um, okay, pretty good. So, you know, you're off to a good start. You've already answered two of the critical questions. Um, uh, let's do a few more here. So let's say, you know, why? Uh, turkeys are uh, underrepresented on many dinner tables in spite of uh, in spite of um, much turkey advocacy, so um, so this is all pretty good, and uh, I think you get the point there. Uh, so basically, you've got your headings and you've got information under the headings. So now, if you wanted to export this, you know, to put it online or to put it wherever it's going to go or to print it. You don't want your readers reading, you know, who, what, why, you know, things like that, because that's obviously confusing. So uh, you can use tags. So control C, control Q, and we can put a tag of ignore. If I put that on each of these. So now we can actually export the document. Uh, let's do it with the body. So then you get the you get the title. Now you see, oh, well, these two were included, but we don't need those. Um, 
or I mean, it could show you, you know, as, as a good comparison. So for the headings that we put the ignore tag on, you see they were ignored from the export and the, the ones where we didn't, they were included. So, so the interesting thing here that, that this is doing is it's allowing you to keep the organizational features. So um, in your final export, you've got rid of the stuff you don't need. Let's just delete those. And let's say, you know, you've already, you've already printed it or you've already read it and you want to say, well, I want to put the Y above the who. You can do alt and up. And now you have the, um, you have the sections um, flipped around like that. So then, you know, when you export it, now the the Y is above the is above the what was that the who? So now you can basically you can basically completely rearrange your document, and then on the front end when you export it, you see no difference basically, because um, because uh, yeah you could you could say well why not when you're done writing just delete the headings. So so yeah you can you can go through and you can delete all your headings. And technically, yes, you can you can move paragraphs, but if you had multiple paragraphs, then um, you couldn't move them around quite as easily. So, so basically, this is something that um, allows you to basically have more granular control over your document and and uh, basically organize it exactly the way you want and um, and do it in a, you know very efficiently. Uh, but that's about it. There's there's of course so much more that can be said about writing in org mode, but that's just an introduction that, that I hope might be helpful for, for other writers out there or even programmers who are writing documentation and other things. Org mode is a great option also because you can export to, to make, to make info pages as well. But anyway, yeah, that, that's another topic for another day. Um, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you next time.